Today, I'm here to say we are not backing down on our effort to determine the citizenship status of the United States population. But no president has tried to do what the Trump administration outlined in a memorandum in July of this year, to exclude people living in the country illegally from the once-a-decade headcount of the U.S. population, a count that determines how many seats each state gets in the House of Representatives, as well as the allocation of federal funding. Leading the plaintiff states seeking injunctive relief from the Supreme Court, New York Attorney General Tish James. The United States Constitution and the census are crystal clear. Every person residing in the United States on Census Day, um, April 1st, regardless of legal status, must be counted. And President Trump's proclamation is the latest in a long list of anti-immigrant actions and statements that he has made since the beginning of his first campaign. In questions to oral arguments brought by the Trump administration today, justices on both sides of the aisle sounded skeptical that President Trump could categorically exclude those living in the country illegally from the census count. The director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project accusing the administration of ending the way it began. It was almost four years ago that the administration began with the Muslim ban. It ends with its second attempt to weaponize the census against immigrant communities. Um, And not just do that, but um, to attack voting rights by tilting the electoral playing field for the next decade. Today's court hearing by telephone due to the coronavirus pandemic marks the second case before the high court in two years related to the 2020 census and immigrants. Last year, the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four against the president's effort to add a citizenship question to the census, critics arguing it was intended to frighten immigrants from taking part in the population count and artificially reduce population numbers in heavily Democratic areas to benefit Republicans. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the liberal justices in that ruling. But the addition of Trump's third appointee, Amy Coney Barrett, changes the court's dynamic with a 6-3 to three conservative majority. Federal courts in California, Maryland, and New York have ruled that the Trump plan violates federal law, or the Constitution, which mandates that representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state. The simple truth is that no one ceases to be a person because they lack documentation or ceases to live here because the president would prefer them to leave.